Um, Tanishta, uh, the slaughter that was carried out by Israel yesterday of unarmed Palestinian protesters and over the last six weeks of the Great March of Return was cold-blooded, deliberate, calculated murder. It wasn't an overreaction. It wasn't a somehow justifiable defence of a border. It was premeditated murder. Now, how do I know that, uh, Tanishta? Well, because I said it to you and the Taoiseach two days before it started six weeks ago in this chamber. I told you, because it was well known in Palestine and in Israel, that the Israelis were deploying a hundred at the time snipers in preparation for the demonstrations, unarmed demonstrations. And on that first day of those protests, the massacre started. They started picking people off who were miles from the fence, who represented no threat to anybody. Even if they had slingshots, and the vast majority of them didn't even have that. It was like uh, throwing a stone into the ocean. Not a chance could they hurt or hit anybody. Uh, but Israel was planning to massacre people. Um, and anything less than sanctions and the expulsion of the Israeli ambassador for an act of premeditated murder against unarmed protesters is an effective green light for Israel to continue. Because nobody can seriously suggest if a state is willing to slaughter in a premeditated way nearly 60 people yesterday, uh, about 45 over the last six weeks, uh, is willing to impose an 11 year long siege on Gaza, imprisoning 2 million people in a siege, refusing to let them in or out, refusing to let goods in and out in order for them to regenerate uh, their uh, uh, tiny patch of land is willing to continuously uh, break international law by expanding illegal settlements into territory uh, designated for the Palestinians. Nobody can seriously suggest that your words of concern, your calls for restraint, are going to make a blind bit of difference to these people. They're not interested. Uh, if they had been even remotely interested in peace, they wouldn't have breached uh, the Oslo Peace Agreement within hours of it being signed. Within hours of it being signed, they were breaching it uh, and expanding settlements. So they have played the international community with the pretense they're interested in peace, while in fact in front of everybody, explicitly and blatantly uh, carrying on with their illegal activities, and when Palestinians try to resist in any shape or form, they are de dealt with the most cruel, savage, murderous brutality. And we just sit back and just continue to let it happen. And I ask you, and I ask you this honestly, Tanishta, what are the, the Palestinians supposed to do? Okay? They elect a group of people in 2005 in a free and fair election observed by international observers. The European, Israel refuses to recognise that government. Uh, the European Union go along with that. The United States, needless to say, uh, refuses to recognise them. A siege is imposed. Uh, an illegal siege, a collective punishment under international law, which is illegal is imposed on them. So they resist, military resistance, which by the way they're entitled to do under international law as well, they're condemned for that, we can't talk to them. So then they move to unarmed protests. And still you sneak in your narrative uh, some sort of claim that they're provoking it. There was a bit of provocation, you say, okay it doesn't justify the killings, but still an implication, they're a little bit to blame. What are they supposed to do? Every single avenue is closed off to them. You won't even talk to the elected representatives. I have appealed to you over the last number of weeks. Will you talk to Hamas? It's okay to talk to the murderous Netanyahu who is celebrating while people are being slaughtered in Gaza and uh, uh, celebrating Trump's provocative move to move the US Embassy to Jerusalem. And you'll talk to him, but you won't talk to the elected representatives of the people of Gaza. 
So you're not neutral brokers in this. If you continue to do that or continue to give favour trade status uh, to Israel when it flagrantly violates international law and murders people. So really, Tanishta, if your words are to mean anything, there has to be consequences like there was for apartheid South Africa. Surely Israel has reached that point where we can say that the sort of action that finally brought apartheid South Africa to heel is necessary for the rogue state and the apartheid state of Israel.